this past Sunday at our 7 o'clock service, uh, there was a gentleman that came into our 7 o'clock service that uh, finding out after the service that he was actually in the midst of one of his worst times ever in his life. He came in and participated in worship, and as I talked with him and as he talked with other people, uh, some, one thing that he said is that it was really a key thing, an important thing, that he came into our service and he felt the presence of God. He sensed the reality of Jesus. There was a lot of chaos going on in his life, and in fact, I don't know where he is today or if we'll ever see him again. But it really challenged me. In fact, as I was uh, yesterday on Monday, uh, doing just my daily devotional reading, I was reading in 2 Kings chapter 13 as I go through the, the stories there, the narrative in 2 Kings. And I came across the, po- the moment when Elisha passed away. Seems like the story just continues on. But Elisha, as he's laying there in his grave, it says that a, a group of raiders or a mob of some outsiders were coming in to torment the people, the Israelite people. And as they were coming, they were spotted by some uh, people that were burying uh, a family member or friend. They were in the midst of a funeral. And in order to avoid the mob, they quickly, they took this man and they threw him into Elisha's tomb. It says that once this man hit Elisha's body, all of a sudden he stood up and he had life. He was alive again. And the thing that just is so challenging to me, and I don't, the the goal is not to just see this in our services, but that we would realize that in our life in the midst of being tired or overwhelmed or financially strapped or being distracted or being just frustrated or depressed or all these things that would make us feel some level of dead or down in our faith, again, it's not contingent on us. Here, Elisha was dead and a body was thrown on him and the power of God moved. In the same way, I'm not saying that our our service on Sunday was dead by any means, but not by our ability or by our potential, that someone would come and be happened to get tossed into our service and sense the presence of God, to the point of maybe a catalyst to change, catalyst to something different. My goal is not to say, hey, I can't wait till next Sunday. Who is God going to throw into our door? But rather, the thing that is just an internal challenge in me is who is being thrown into my life today? Who is stumbling into my life today? Who is being tossed into my tomb today? Who do I need to interact with today that they would know the presence of God and be changed? I'd encourage you, as we think about church, as we think about communities, as we think about living out our faith, pretty easy to to think that, well, what's going to happen next Sunday? I encourage you to think about who has been tossed into your life today. Say, well, what do I have to offer? Elisha didn't have much to offer, but a dead man was raised to life. Can I experience that today? Can you experience that today? And then our services Our Sunday services will go from more from being that moment for somebody who's going to stumble, who's going to happen to come in there, but rather will be a moment when we would introduce the people that have bumped into our lives to community, to togetherness, to living out faith as a body of Christ. Let our services be that. So I want to encourage you. I'm actually going to take a minute. I I just want to pray. I've been so moved to, to pray for our church community that the people we'd bump into get thrown into this week, that we would uh, breathe life into them even beyond our ability. So Jesus, I see the, the truth of narrative in 2 Kings 13. I see the parable of this even being lived out in our service last Sunday, somebody stumbling in and sensing your presence. In this parallel, Lord, I pray that in our week, in our life, in the things that we are doing, as we are being bombarded with people and situation and thing and in the midst of feeling like maybe we don't even have anything to offer, that you will work through us. So Lord, I pray for our Corner Church family, our community, that we would use every moment, we would seize every opportunity to be used by you. Because the people that we're bumping into may be ordained by you. Jesus, I pray these things in your name. Amen. I encourage you. Think about, dwell on this. 
Who's being thrown into your tomb today that the power of God can move through you? Have a great week.